Hey guys, it's Rainy Romero with The Lovely Law Firm. Today on another Carolina Justice Report. Today we're talking about a subject that hits close to home. It's the ex Horry County Deputy Stephen Flood. So I'm joined with attorneys Amy Lawrence and Sarah Austin today, and we're talking about Stephen Flood, who was recently sentenced, and he is the ex Horry County deputy who was driving one of the vehicles that had two women in it. We'll kind of go into this further in a second, but they drowned when he was driving through um, a flooded area, right? So let's uh, kind of back up on this. So Stephen Flood, who, who is he, and kind of how did this story evolve? So he uh, was a sheriff's deputy with Horry County Sheriff's. And um, he was a tra he was doing transport for the jail and the sheriff's department, and they got a call that they needed. Um, t they weren't inmates. The women that were transported, they were um, on psych holds, from what I understand. Right? right, they were mental health patients. Right. Yeah, that needed to be transferred. And you know, this goes back to like what we talk about all the time. We need more social workers in mm -hmm. the world because this is really a job for a social worker and not a, a police officer. But um, they were. The department, the deputy, was tasked with um, transporting um, these two women, and when they did, um, it was during Hor Hurricane Florence. Yes, right when we had all the flooding in Horry County. Um, so it, these mental health patients needed to be transferred during a hurricane, and all those back roads were flooding, and he disregarded a barrier at the direction, I think, of someone else. Of a National Guard, yeah, and I think that I think that this is really what was is key. If I had defended Mr. Flood, um, that it was a National Guard who was boots on the ground, who said it was safe to go through the barrier, right? Waved him through. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important. But what happens is, is when they go through that barrier, it was not safe, and um, the transport van um, was taken over with um, flood water, and the women in the back drowned. Mm. And oh, it makes me cry even thinking about it. Yep. I, get, I get so teary. I just think about it because that's it's horrible. And we know um, from the witnesses that Mr. Flood and then um, the other deputy that was with him for the transport um, did everything they could to try to open the back because the only way, the only access was through lock and key in, in the at the back of the van. But the water and the pressure of the of the Russian water, they couldn't do anything about it. And so they were there as the water filled up. I'd heard their screams and did everything they could uh. to try to open it up, but it, it just, they just couldn't. And I think there's a lot to be said about what, what really makes me angry about this whole situation is, like you kind of touched on at the beginning, um, they were mental health patients. They were not inmates. Right. And they were transported in a van with a cage in it, no windows, double no locks, yeah. double locks, no way out, like you would transport a prisoner. And these are women who were in mental health crisis. That's why they needed trans transporting. Um, and so they were locked up like inmates with no windows, no doors. And that's not, I don't attribute that necessarily to Mr. Flood. I think that's why I- That's a bigger system. That's the thing, that's why I feel for them here because those, in my opinion, those women should have never even been in that type yeah. of van to be transported in the first place. So there was just a lot of failures in this transportation process that led to their death, which is uh, tragic. I can't imagine being in the back of a, in a cage. Knowing what's coming. It's a worst nightmare. Yeah, it's a worst nightmare for them and their families is horrific. Um, was but it emer an emergency for why they had to be transported? Because why even go out in flood I don't waters? really know the answer to that. Yeah. Uh, I never really dug and, and found that part out. Um, but just, I think it was because the hospital was already running on like low staff, low everything that they needed to like, because I think it was up at Loris. Was it Loris that they were at? They were like or at a Loris or Marion. Loris or Marion Hospital. Marion County. Yeah, which was a very, very small hospital, which is why they were being moved to a bigger hospital because we were in the middle of this, you know, the aftermath of this hurricane with all this, you know, 100 year flood. And, and that's kind of why they were moving them around, from what I understand. Well, and I want to give names to these two ladies. So it's Wendy Newton and Nicolette Green are the two, uh, the two ladies who, who, who drowned in that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so Stephen was recently, you know, uh, convicted of this and had his trial and was sentenced. Um, how long was he sentenced to? 18 years. 18 years. And, um, you know, what was kind of the case against him as far as, you know, things he did wrong along the way? 
I mean, I think the argument was is that he went past the barrier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was convicted was of, I read, um, reckless homicide mm -hmm. and involuntary manslaughter. Well, I think that, you know, you know, when I was reading it, it was kind of like they had told him not to go that route, but he wanted to cut time and go that route anyway, and he was waved on through. But I think the argument was, well, you were told not to go that route, so yeah. that's on you. Um, but it's just a terrible case, you know, and this is somebody who is with, you know, who was a deputy for years and years. You know, when we see these older, with the sheriff's department, because Horry County is very different. We have a Horry County Police Department and Horry County Sheriff, and we're only um, one of two counties in South Carolina that have this kind of bifurcation. And Horry County Police Department is um, tasked with investigating cases, road officers, that kind of thing. And then um, Horry County Sheriff's Department is tasked with running the jail, doing service of process, running the courthouse, that kind of stuff. Gotcha. And and doing these transports, serving old warrants, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And what we see, um, you know, the majority of the officers at the police de or at the Sheriff's Department are those that are in the, the kind of the end of their careers as law enforcement. Mm -hmm. You know, Mr. Phil was 70 years old. He was, you know, doing transports for, you know, he was not transporting hard murders. He was doing these other things. And he was in a, in a car that they gave him and, and that's all they had to use. And so, uh, you know, my heart hurts for everybody involved in this whole case. Yeah. But, and I remember I ran into, um, or I'll sit down and had a meeting with Sheriff Thompson, who I really respect, the Horry County Sheriff. And, and I asked him how he was doing and and how his department was doing because it was just really hard for everybody you know my heart hurt for that family but my heart hurt just as bad for the sheriff's department and these deputies because it was just a horrific accident right mm -hmm. and sheriff thompson had just started crying it was very you know just his heart was broken for those women and and his, and his people too but mainly those women and it was just a horrific horrible accident yeah you know what i mean right and like not so you I don't know, think he accident, no bad people hurt. right no yeah. bad people involved just yeah we, this is not um you know a, this thing where somebody did this horrible act and they're this horrible person right with all this malice it's just it's not like that yeah and I think for me and I hate in situations when this happens but I know that Stephen Flood's attorneys use the term blame shifting but in this case when they pick a bad guy Stephen Flood and say he did every single thing wrong to cause this instead of making everybody involved in the system look at what could we have done differently. Um, we should have never had them in that van, maybe. Yeah, the, 100%. The we should never have should, them in that van. Yeah, we should right. never have them in that van. Those guards should not have waved him through the alternate route. I mean, there's a million things they could have done differently that I feel like we're not even talking about because... Yeah, the failure of the system. Yeah. And then and they're not changing. The guy. Yeah, that they're not going to change now because they're going to say, well, we just had we just had a bad sheriff's deputy, not that we had a bad system. And for me, when I look at this case, I feel like there was a lot of system failures. I know that they did sue um, the manufacturer of the van who makes those cage vans wow. and they settled that case for a million dollars. So there's one system failure, maybe yeah. maybe like a, a chipping away at what went wrong here. But I would really like to see everybody, the National Guard the sheriff's deputies, everybody just take a look at what they did to contribute to this instead of putting it all on one person. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know I'm they going did to call call Sheriff Thompson <laughs> when we get done filming this and I'm going to set up a meeting and I'm going to ask him what we've done to make things different because I have a feeling um, if he hasn't, then I'm going to tell him he needs to. Yeah. 18 years in prison is not going to stop. 18 years in prison served by Stephen Flood is not going to stop the next incident from happening. Yeah. And so I think that that's just, I don't want it to stop here. Right. Well, and I think the other deputy that was in the vehicle has been charged too. I don't think that he's had his trial yet, mm -hmm. um, but it's just. He was a passenger in that car. It's yeah. sad. It's, it's the whole thing sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just all horrific from start to finish. And, you know, those deputies um, have to live with what happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that just punishment. Just punishment. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They had to listen and, and, and try in vain to, to save somebody they couldn't and that is really that's really hard to stomach, you know? Yeah. And live with. Yeah. So, you know, I know that we kind of know 
you know, that Stephen Flood is going to be in prison now. But is there anything that we're waiting for? I mean, obviously, we're waiting on that second deputy to kind of have his trial. But is it possible that Stephen can kind of have a retrial or anything like that? I mean, there's always appeals that happen. Um, I'm sure that he will try to appeal it, yeah. um, whether that's successful or whether that process takes so long that he passes away. He is seven. He 70. is 70 years old, and that process can take a, years. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. I, I didn't pay close enough attention to the trial to sort of comment on if there were errors made or anything like that. Yeah, we were in the middle of our own trial at the time, and so we didn't get to listen to it and watch it like we normally would have. Um, yeah. It was such an important case in our, in our community. Um, but I just felt like there was so much, there was something there was so much more that could have been done to change the system. Right. To ensure that this never happens again, because I can guarantee Mr. Flood would have, this would have never happened, you know, with him again. He yeah. would have never made the same I agree. again. Mm -hmm. So the question is, are we fixing the problem? Well, and I was, you know, in case you're wondering, I was, I was reading why they were being transported. And um, it doesn't seem like anything that was made, had to be done right then and there. So why are we even transporting them in unsafe, like that. Uh, who so who made that call right. um, at the beginning? So yeah, I, I don't there a responsibility in that, right? Yeah, I don't think we have answers to any of those questions. We're just like, oh, Stephen Flood dr drove through the barrier. That was the last thing that happened to get us to this situation. Yeah, yeah. It's saying, well, you know, Wendy Newton, who was 45, um, she was just looking, she was needing medicine for her anxiety mm -hmm. and fear. And then Nicolette Green, who was 43, um, was just going to a uh, mental health appointment with a counselor she hadn't even met before. Um, so these, you know, everybody's soul situation is there better. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I agree. Well, folks, as always, let us know your thoughts, you know, stuff that you would like us to chat about in the future. And, and also, you know, we'll keep you updated on kind of what happens with the second trial as that moves forward or if anything new happens with Stephen Flood. Uh, thank you so much for watching today. Thank you, ladies, for your input, as always. Uh, make sure you check us out on all of our uh, social media channels, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we have this as a podcast as well. And we will see you next Tuesday at 2 p.m. When life gets ugly, justice is lovely. Love